How wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a somewhat bizarre organism, or technically, a somewhat bizarre worm, that you can kind of see right here. A strange animal living in the darkest depths of the ocean, that technically is also kind of connected to something that you can find in some of the most famous art. And so basically here we're going to discuss a tale of survival and a tale of toxicity. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, I will need to explain this. But basically here we're talking about some really important biological processes that turned a deadly chemical into something very useful and into something that we sometimes use for art. And I guess let's maybe start with this first. Let's not start with the deep ocean, let's start with the typical art gallery. For example, this famous painting by Raphael of Madonna and Child. And so generally when you see these old paintings and when you see something that looks like this with a lot of yellow that represents, I guess, gold or even something more natural that just contains people wearing yellow, it all essentially comes down to this, orpiment. The beautiful pigment that produces brilliant deep orange yellow colors that was highly valued by artists for a very long time. And especially during the medieval and renaissance periods, including famous painters like Raphael and Tintoretto. And that's because it usually provided one of the few truly clear bright yellow pigments that was easily available until 19th century. With its name Orpiment coming from the Latin for Oripigmentum, essentially meaning gold pigment. And I think this photo here kind of shows you why it was called this. It produced a striking color and historically it was even believed it contained actual gold, which is why a lot of religious paintings always contained it. But Orpiment also contained something somewhat secret. Actually, it was a dark secret. It contained something very toxic. A chemical known as arsenic trisulfide. As a matter of fact, it was often used as an insect poison, and its toxicity was quite well known even back then. And so eventually the artists kind of stopped using it because it was just too dangerous. Although strangely enough, they mostly stopped using it not because it was toxic, but because it was also somewhat incompatible with certain other pigments, especially those based on lead or copper. But even in these ancient paintings, orpiment is still a bit of a concern, because it technically slowly degrades into soluble arsenic. And specifically arsenic oxides, which are known to be toxic, and that a lot of these paintings eventually produced. And so technically even touching this painting can be kind of dangerous. Which by itself is kind of ironic. Something that was prized by artists centuries ago, and something that was used to represent holiness, turns out is now also being actively produced by an animal at the very bottom of the ocean. And so this is our segue into today's story. In the deep western Pacific, far below 1000 meters of depth, and especially in the locations where we have a lot of hydrothermal vents, we essentially have some of the most chemically challenging places to survive on the planet. And this is the environment that's filled with highly concentrated heavy metals and a lot of toxic gases, and even super high temperatures of up to 608 Fahrenheit, 320 Celsius. And naturally, you don't really expect a lot to survive in these conditions, but, as you can see from these images, some animals do. And among them is a very strange segmented worm, very often just a few centimeters in length, or basically about this big. And you can kind of see some of them in this image. This worm is known as Paralovinella hesleri. The only animal known to colonize and thrive in the hottest, most acidic, and extremely metal-rich zones, essentially thriving around these hydrothermal vents. And when these worms were initially observed by some of the remotely operated vehicles, scientists were actually stunned by their somewhat bizarre appearance. Unlike most of the deep sea creatures that usually don't produce a lot of colors and tend to be very pale or even transparent, this unusual worm was bizarrely bright yellow, with these worms standing out vividly against the white microbial film, making this whole structure look entirely different. And it was actually hard to believe that this was even real or that this was an animal. Remember, this is thousands of meters below the surface and in some of the most extreme conditions on the planet. Very high acidity, lots of toxicity, and up to 300 Celsius in temperature. Yet here we had something that could survive and even thrive in this very toxic environment. But the surprise here was not the fact that this was even possible, but how this worm was surviving here. Because around these particular hydrothermal vents, most animals had to also deal with something very specific. Two highly toxic substances arsenic and sulfide. And as you probably know in humans, arsenic exposure can very quickly lead to severe health problems. But the strange color of this animal, as you can probably guess, was actually caused by arsenic itself. Here it was quickly discovered that this worm accumulates so much of this poison that it can sometimes make up more than 1% of the total weight 
essentially making it vibrant yellow. And this was an exceptionally high accumulation of arsenic that's never been seen before anywhere. This was literally an arsenic hyperaccumulator. But all of this eventually confirmed in the 2025 study that used advanced microscopy and genomics, and of course chemical analysis, to try to figure out what's going on here and how this is even possible. With some of the first microscopic studies revealing these. Lots and lots of yellow granules containing arsenic. And eventually scientists worked out how this was possible. This was a process referred to as intracellular biomineralization. Or basically the worm here evolved a very unique strategy that researchers describe as fighting poison with poison. Instead of trying to excrete these toxins or basically trying to poop them out, this worm takes two deadly chemicals, arsenic and hydrogen sulfide, and then combines them inside the cells to create a mineral that's not dangerous at all. And essentially all of this just involves four separate steps. First it starts to accumulate arsenic, and surprisingly mostly in its toxic inorganic form. Here it usually enters its body from pretty much everywhere. But at the same time it also uptakes a lot of sulfides. And this is just the result of the swarm living very close to a lot of venting fluids that usually contain a lot of hydrogen sulfide dissolved in the water. And so once again the worm's body absorbs sulfide directly, allowing it to absorb through the skin. And then during the third step, that's when the magic happens. Here it involves a specific reaction. Certain cells, particularly those in its skin and parts of the body responsible for breathing, concentrate arsenic into small spherical clumps referred to as intracellular granules. That's basically what we see right here. And within these granules, arsenic reacts with incoming sulfide, which then results in the last step, formation of very bright yellow minerals referred to as orpiments. The same orpiments used by the Renaissance painters. And because orpiment is insoluble and does not interact with a lot of stuff right away, it then becomes locked away in other cells, eventually resulting in these bright yellow colors. And so here by converting two separate poisons, it essentially results in a solid stable mineral that simultaneously neutralizes both toxins and makes this worm very brilliant yellow. And though at first this was assumed to be maybe some kind of a symbiosis with maybe some kind of an arsenic-based or sulfide-based bacteria, eventually the analysis of these granules revealed that there was no bacteria, no symbiosis of any kind, but instead represented an electron-dense structure enclosed with a membrane that essentially represented a kind of a internal detoxification vacuole created by the worm itself. And that's once again something we've never seen before anywhere. With this discovery suggesting that this probably involved some kind of a really complex biochemical machinery and some very specific proteins. And in this case the study was detailed enough to even identify which proteins and what sort of reactions were involved. For example for transport, this involved a large molecule called multidrug resistant association protein or MRP. This is the protein located on the membrane surrounding the yellow granules that acts as a specialized gate pumping arsenic into the vacuole in order to be trapped. And for the sulfides, the worm was able to use something that most of us already have. It employed a specialized version of the common biological molecule referred to as hemoglobin. Now normally we use them for transporting oxygen, but here these internal hemoglobins appear to play a role in also transporting toxic hydrogen sulfides. And so by delivering sulfide into these vacuoles, this resulted in a very efficient reaction and the formation of this stable orpiment mineral. Which by itself is a really bizarre adaptation, but clearly worked for this worm because they're exceptionally successful in these environments. With a discovery in this case highlighting the profound evolutionary innovation needed for life to colonize truly hostile environments. Because this worm turns something that's super toxic and super dangerous into something that just makes it look pretty. With this discovery changing our understanding of a lot of biological processes. For example, biomineralization. The process of living things creating minerals. Now in most contexts biomineralization is studied when looking at formation of bones or maybe shells or for some kind of a structural reinforcement. But here this worm uses the orpiment production purely for detoxification and for survival. And also I guess for making itself look pretty. Moreover, when it comes to toxic molecules, this worm is only the second animal ever discovered known to actively process and solidify sulfide minerals. The only other animal known to us is the scaly food snail, Chrysomelon squamiferum. 
The snail also lives in some really extreme environments, which essentially highlights that for these animals, solidifying sulfide minerals seems to be an important chemical adaptation in extreme sulfur-rich environments. But all of this shows us that a lot of these mechanisms could be a lot more widespread than we previously thought. Even though this is obviously the most extreme case, a lot of related deep sea worms, such as the famous Pompeii worm, Alvinella pompeiana, can also accumulate very high levels of arsenic and, in theory, can also utilize very similar strategies. And so this idea of fighting poison with poison might be considered a very important adaptation for many animals thriving in these deep sea vent conditions. And this, of course, can also have some implications for biotechnology as well. Since we know arsenic is very toxic and is also technically an environmental pollutant, by learning how this worm has these controlled biological processes for locking away arsenic and sulfur together, humans can also maybe create something very similar for managing and cleaning up various environmental toxins on the surface. So this could maybe lead to certain methods for cleaning environmental disasters. And so by itself, this is a pretty incredible discovery. The same toxic yellow mineral that was used to create some of the most famous paintings is the very substance that allows this tiny worm to survive in an extremely hostile and deadly environment. And actually the environment that up until very recently, scientists believed was probably very hostile for complex life. But this little worm proved us wrong. Evolution always finds a way. And so for this worm, Paralovinella hesleri, survival means transforming pure poison into sparkling golden protection. And that's super cool. Anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to mention, and we'll definitely come back and discuss this more once there are some additional cool discoveries. Until then, check out some of the previous videos on similar topics in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support the channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access and a few secret videos. Or you can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.